So this is a story that uh, that got kind of goofed up last week, uh, which is the story about the farmer strike that just happened, right? And this is kind of a follow up to uh, to the largest strike in human history that happened in November. It happened on Thanksgiving, right? It, and uh, there was no media coverage. I talked about that uh, when when I did that live stream. Was there was uh, almost no media coverage of it, and if there was any media coverage of it, it was kind of like this throwaway kind of thing. And this happened before because there was uh, India. India did uh, another strike uh, a few years back, which, you know, the Guardian was one of the few. And I think the Independent was one of the other ones that that did talk about how 150 million people in, in maybe 2016 or 2017 uh, in India went on strike against very similar things against neoliberal economic policies that they knew was uh, was not beneficial uh, for the working class in India. So they went on strike. They fought back uh, against it. Two new, two corporate media outlets, mainstream media outlets, kind of covered it. This time around, two hundred and fifty million people go on strike in November on Thanksgiving, uh, and uh, and it just again, no one fucking covered it. Like Left Voice covered it. Uh, me, Lee Camp, Graham Elwood, Jimmy Dore covered it. Like four asshole comedians. Um, like streaming about it from our apartments, <laughs> fucking covered it. But like organizations that have millions of dollars, uh, and and you know the state of the art technology was just like, there's a turkey that got pardoned. Oh boy, let's meet Turkey Ted. He's he's along. He's being pardoned for the crime of being a turkey. You guys, he was a he was an illegal turkey, and now he's pardoned. Like that was. The fucking story. That, and then they had to cover like how the Thanksgiving parade won't be the Thanksgiving. And it's like, no shit, there's a fucking pandemic going on. Like maybe a parade isn't really the f the first thing on people's minds. But the strike is still going on. Uh, I mentioned this when I when I did uh, Lee Camp stream uh, on on Thursday <clears throat> when and somebody in the comments asked about it. Uh, and and so I. <laughs> I, I kind of had to, I, I like apologized to Lee a little bit after, after the stream where I was like, did I just, I'm sorry if I like went off on a fucking super rant on your, on your show. And he was like, that's nah, cool. Don't worry about it. Uh, I guess I'm apologizing to the wrong person about, about being too ranty, but uh, it is still going. The farmer strike is still going and they're still marching uh, and they're still fighting back against a lot of the neoliberal economic policies. Uh, so what are these economic policies, right? So to understand what's going on, basically uh, what was happening in India with the farmers is, you know, they would they they were selling directly to the government. The government was buying up whatever grains and agriculture they had, and the government had to pay them a, a minimum. There was a minimum on what they could and could not uh, pay these farmers for their grains. And then the government would, you know, give it to the uh, whatever the the retailers the grocery stores the vendors and so on and so forth so what the government basically did was they said let's cut out the middleman now the government's no longer involved and the farmers work directly with the vendors and oh man this is going to be good for you guys this is check this shit out you guys can directly sell to the to 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 the the, the vendors and you can make more money but now the vendors are saying wait a minute we don't have to meet this government you know minimum to pay these farmers you know, so like the government minimum might have been like 3000 rupees per bag of grain or bag of produce or whatever it was. And now they're like, well, well, we want it for half so we can sell it for more and and quadruple our profits, because that's how deregulation and the free market works. When there's no caps on things, who ends up getting hurt at the end of the day? But the little guy. Right. And that's what the farmers feared. And that's what they said. They said, well, this is concerning because you know these are we we're all small businesses uh they're they're farmers that you know are are run by a family they have a plot of land and this is their entire life now there is this thing where uh bear monsanto has come in uh and they've you know put their crops in their crops uh will cross pollinate with these farmers and then uh, they'll be like, oh, well, you got our crops in your farm and they'll buy out their farm. And then these farmers lose everything and they will commit suicide because they've lost their means of income. They've lost their purpose in life. They've lost their meaning. I mean, you know, so, so Bear Monsanto was driving these farmers to, to commit suicide. So that was already a problem. 
before this law came into place. And now these farmers are saying, well, now really all you're doing is is allowing a, a private farm, you know, private agriculture company from overseas to come in and, and, and say, well, we'll sell you grains for cheaper, which then means that we can't sell the the you know, the, the wheat, the, the, uh, produce, the rice, all the stuff that we've, we've, you know, grown. And that's 58% of the labor force in India is part of the agricultural sector. And you're killing 58% of, uh, the labor in the country just because you don't want to pay them, uh, a, a, you know, a living wage, essentially, uh, their version of a living wage, because you want you you don't want the government to be involved. The government doesn't have to uphold their minimums. The private industries doesn't have to uphold their minimum minimums. So the the private industries can charge whatever the hell they want, and they're going to charge. They're going to make the farmers sell it for for less, so they can make more money out of it. So they decided to go on strike. Now before they went on strike. This new law came in in September of 2020. Between September of 2020 and November of 2020, they had five meetings with uh, Amit Shah, who is part of the the BJP, the Bharati Janata Party. I think is 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 uh, what it, what it stands for. I might be wrong. If 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 I am, leave a comment. Uh, but the BJP is is basically like the Republicans of India. They're the more conservative party in India, and this guy. You know, the five meetings that these farmers had were like, hey, listen, like you have to understand, like those minimums were helpful because they helped cover a lot of our costs. And, you know, they kept us in the black. They put food on the table for our families and they helped us grow the crops for the following year. So, you know, can can you like listen to what we're saying? And then Amit Shah basically being the neoliberal asshole that he is, talked down to them and basically told, like, reiterated the same shit of like, oh, but you can make more money. The free market, neoliberal is blah, blah, blah. And he and he talked down to them and they said, you know, fuck it. Well, if they're not listening to us when we're trying to have a conversation with them on their level, then then we'll go direct action and we'll go we'll go, you know, we'll go strike against these uh, neoliberal assholes that don't give a shit about us. And that's what happened, right? And so now this is the continuation of that. Uh, so they led a march in New Delhi, which is the capital of India. That's that's where the march was being led this time around. It was going to coincide with Republic Day. And basically, they were going to try to get a bunch of attention. Now, what happened was the, the strike route, because nothing says civil disobedience than being told exactly where you can be disobedient, right? It's like fucking free speech zones at colleges to be like, this is where you can express your opinion here. It's a metal box. Speak into this and you are free. But when you come out, you can't say anything anti-capitalist. Like it's like shit like that. So they basically gave this route and these farmers were like, this is shit. This is terrible. So they, they, you know, broke through the barriers. They, they were like metal gates and barriers made out of rocks, and the cops started getting pissed, so the cops pushed back on them, and then the farmers pushed back on them, right? And the cops started using rubber bullets, flashbangs, tear gas, fucked everything up. And what does CNN cover? That. That's what CNN covered this time around. Uh, CNN did not cover the, the, the true reasons why these people are on strike. And why they broke through the barricade to begin with. And as if the barricade itself is like, you know, the law that you have to follow. Like, fuck that shit. These people want to be seen. They want their stories to be heard. They want their perspective to be understood. They're not going to go through these fucking whatever, un, you know, ba backdoor backwoods fucking alley streets that you have to be like, oh, well, seven people saw us today. There's no reporters to cover this shit. You know, American corporate media is basically silent on this shit. Well, fuck it. Let's make ourselves heard. Again, direct action <laughs> on top of another direct action. And then, you know, so CNN basically goes, oh, look how violent this is. This is crazy. It's so violent. These strikes in India are crazy. They're so violent. We shouldn't be supporting this sort of stuff. It's so not. Why can't they just. Gandhi was in India. Why can't they just have a peaceful protest? And again, the protest was peaceful. The march was peaceful. 
Everything about what they were doing was 100% peaceful. Who instigated it was the police, was the fact that you screwed them over again. You screwed them over in the beginning. They said you they were going to be screwed over, and then they were, right? Like these vendors uh, where they would normally charge like 3,000 rupees for a bag of rice are now charging them 1,600 dollars 1600 rupees, sorry. So it's like ha they're making half of what they need to. That's not enough for them to stay in the black. That's not enough for them to be able to run their continue running their farms. It's it, so, you know, they continuously were like, hey, we're being fucked over. Hello. You know, this idea that you said would make us super rich. It's actually doing the fucking opposite of it. You talk down to them. You ignored them when there was 250 million people on strike. It's called a solidarity strike. This happened again, by the way, uh, last when when this story came out uh, last Tuesday, the solidarity strikes from taxi drivers, uh, truckers and railway workers. So when I covered this, there was a group that I shared this information into that called me propaganda. They called me some kind of leftist, like they might as well call me a Russian, right? At that, at this point, that's what it, that's what it, it equals to. If you talk about direct action against neoliberal capitalist ideologies, they go, "Oh, Russian." It's like Russia's fucking capitalist too. Like, what are you talking about? So here's here's where it ended on Tuesday. On Tuesday, the Indian Supreme Court was like, all right, this is like, we got to do something about this. So they basically said, well, why don't we have um, a uh, appoint a committee that can take up these grievances and then come back and f and we can figure out a solution to, to, to make things work. And the only problem the farmers had with it was we don't want you to pick the committee. Right, like the pro the pro neoliberal government Supreme Court should not be the one that picks the committee. There should be somebody that represents the farmer. So somebody that knows and understands the ins and outs of uh, agriculture in India, knows what these farmers have to go through, knows what it takes to run a farm. That somebody like that should be at the negotiating table with these farmers. To say this is what we need. Which to me makes a hundred percent sense, right? Like that it like obviously that's what you should <laughs> that's what you should do. Like anytime they should make like in, in America, if you're if you're talking about like um if you're talking about like minimum wage, right? If you're talking about what people in America need to on like bare minimum to survive. To, to 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 earn a, a a livable income it shouldn't be somebody like nancy pelosi who makes a hundred million dollars or chuck schumer who makes a couple million or fucking mitch mcconnell who makes 30 million right it shouldn't be these these people that make so much money that they don't have to worry about rent food water internet any of these bills to be like okay if i pay this am i gonna have enough for the other shit or is this a month where we don't have water? Or is this a month where I can't, you know, pay for gas? Or, you know, just so then basically what they do is they keep you uh, keep the minimum wage low enough so you have to get credit cards and go into debt even more because that's how the fucking economy runs. That's how neoliberal capitalist economies run. They don't run on profits. They run on debt. That's how the that's how these people are able to make these astronomical amounts of profit. And that's what's going to happen again in India. So now what are they doing? Uh, in New Delhi, near all these strikes, internet and mobile um, signals are cut. They just cut it. On Saturday, they just, cut the, they just cut the signal where these people are occupying to get their voices heard to say this, is, this neoliberalism is not going to fucking work. This free market capitalism bullshit is not going to work. And they suspended the internet there. The reason why the government said they did this was because they wanted to maintain public safety. That's what they said. They wanted to maintain public safety, so they had to cut the internet. Really? Boy, is that what it is?
were people figuring out how to use the internet to fire back at the cops or were people using the fucking internet to show people exactly what the fuck was going on to show people that that the strikers were peaceful and the ones that antagonized them were the cops Was it lefty organizations that show up there and talk to these strikers and learn about what's going on and then tell the story to the rest of the world? Is that why the internet was cut off? So you could control the narrative. That's the only reason. I mean, this level of censorship is outrageous. And this is, it's antithetical because one of the things about Modi where I was like, okay, you know, I can give him a little credit on this. I disagree with the guy. I think he's gone about and executed things in a, in in really terrible ways that has very detrimentally affected the working class of uh, in India. I will at least give it to the fact that he's trying to get internet and you know digital technology with education to rural communities in India, so that one billion people in his country are digitally connected and can have access to the internet and can learn and grow and you know and and get out of theoretically the idea behind what he was saying was oh if everybody has the internet they have the they have the ability to learn they have the ability to you know have the 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 best of technology so that they can become the best person that they can be that's the idea and this same guy is like Oh no, we'll cut the internet whenever we want. So then now it becomes a problem because then you go, wait a minute. If you do have everybody, if you do give internet to everybody, and then the these internet companies are connected with the government, and somebody in some village, you know, says, Oh, well, Modi is doing XYZ, we should, you know, we should strike against that. We should we should protest against that, and you shut off their internet. That's not okay. That's that's a totalitarian government. That's authoritarian. That's the kind of shit that's happening here in America where they're just deplatforming people, where they suppress you if you if you don't talk about the the left right dynamic, where everything isn't in, in neatly put into these specific boxes that they allow you to talk it not talk in. The same thing as these people uh, uh, you know going through these barricades. We allow you to disobey. No, no, no. That's not how disobedience works. <laughs> So they're still striking. Their internet has been cut off. And fucking corporate media is just like, yeah. No one's holding their feet to the fire. This this is something that I think America needs to pay attention to because this is this is the type of shit that'll happen here if there was a nationwide general strike. In America, and before everybody goes, oh well, that's impossible. Two hundred and fifty million Indian people went on a general strike on Thanksgiving Day. Two hundred and fifty million in a country that has a billion people. They were able to organize a two hundred and fifty million person strike. So don't tell me that it's impossible to do in America. Don't tell me that it's a bad idea because it is. And neoliberal capitalists will fucking push back and they will do all of the shit that they're doing in India here when that level of, uh, of, of strike takes place. And we are headed there. Minimum wage is supposed to go up to 15 by 2025 when people needed it in 20 fucking 15. We're waiting on $2,000 checks that were promised. $2,000. That's what Joe Biden said would happen if Georgia went blue. It went blue. Everything got silenced, and then he turned it into $1,400, and now they might be considering to make it $1,000. People are, are, are on, on the cusp of poverty, on the cusp of bankruptcy, on the cusp of not being able to put food on their table in the, in the richest and greatest country in the world. So we're I mean, this is we're ripe for a general strike at this point. We're ripe to do what what's going on in India. Because Joe Biden and his administration are also neoliberals, just like the ones in India, just like Jair Bolsonaro in, in Brazil, just like Lena Moreno in fucking Ecuador. 
just like Trudeau in Canada, too. And neoliberalism, time and time again, will fail and will get pushback like what we're seeing in India. And so to me, the only the only solution for America to get better and the only solution in India to make life better for people is to do exactly what they're doing, which is to strike, which is to march, which is to occupy and amplify these voices, to amplify ideas like making sure that farmers are getting a minimum. Like ensuring people have a living wage, like ensuring universal basic needs are covered, like making sure Internet is available to everybody. Like making sure education isn't behind a paywall. These are all ideas that need to be talked about and need to be amplified. And these are all ideas neoliberal capitalists don't fucking want. So what do we do? We push back by uh, taking you know act, direct action like general strikes. Let's look at some comments. Uh, can't give people ideas, can we? Yeah, exactly. They don't want. They don't want. They don't want to cover any of this stuff because once those out, once those ideas, once that seed is planted in your brain, you go, "Oh, wait a minute. Maybe this is. Maybe this is a good tactic." <laughs> it really gets in the way of brunch. Those strikes. Uh, I will say that's one thing in India that you don't see is uh, no brunch, no brunch. Uh, direct is much better for farmers. Too bad uh, the vendors took advantage. Well, right, that's that's exactly the drawback. So, so in in principle, I think that is a good idea if the farmers can directly talk with the vendors and and strike some kind of deal. But the vendors have all all the control, so the vendors can be like, "Well, I'm not going to do business with you when some guy down the street is going to." So, I think taking the minimums off is a really bad idea. Let them have direct contact with the vendors, but keep the minimums in place. Right, the vendors are not allowed to shortchange the farmers because that kind of strike is a neoliberal capitalist nightmare. Yeah, a base. I mean, a large general strike is, um, is is something that is, uh, you know, it's a nightmare for them. They don't want to deal with it. It's something that they don't know how to handle uh, very well. Monsanto, this is from Devo and, uh, on Rockfin. Monsanto Bayer gives cancer for free. They sure do. Uh, that was actually proven. Uh, or uh, the uh, herbicide Roundup uh, was was uh, shown to give um, people cancer. So you know, this is this is the type of companies that the that the that, that neoliberal capitalists support that that they want to grow is companies that that you know put out a product that give people cancer it's absolutely ridiculous it's absolutely ridiculous all right we are thank you so much for checking out this video if you enjoyed this content uh please make sure that you hit the like button hit the share button and make sure you're subscribed to my channel whether it's on rockfin youtube or or Facebook, especially Facebook and YouTube. They often uncensor pe uh, un unsubscribe people and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, um, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. There you'll find past episodes of, uh, of various shows that I, uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows the forkful of noodles live virtual comedy shows uh the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website but if you're also on financial stable ground you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member which gets you free tickets and bonus content and go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to to make any kind of financial contributions but if you can't it's not a necessity most of my stuff is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. 
So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. And I hope to see you at the next video.